Hi, I'm Dawn Monique Williams, and I am the director for The Courage to Write a Woman's Wrongs by Anna Caro. This play for me is uh, about uh, women's liberation. Uh, I know that sounds like sort of lofty, but um, but I do think that um, Anakara was playing with actually a kind of popular trope of a woman, you know, playing a breeches role, so so dressing as a as a man, to have a little more agency to move freely about. And with this story in particular, um, our heroine Leonor is um, out to get revenge on on a lover who wronged her. But the part where she um, assumes some agency. Um, and, is, and is on her own quest to restore her own honor, her own dignity. Um, that's really exciting to me. It's a women's empowerment play. I've directed a couple of readings of Spanish Golden Age, and then I did a play that's like a contemporary play, but it's based on the writing of Spanish nuns from the period who had a lot of their books and stuff burned, but a straight up Spanish golden age I've um, never directed. And I have done a lot of Shakespeare, and so there's a lot of similarities with the Shakespeare, but um, but this is a play that's in translation, so the, the like rules of meter and verse play out a little bit differently. Um, also, just geographically, historically, um, the kind of like cultural imperialism of Spain is very, very vast. And the audience members might be surprised to hear that like, oh, the play is set in Brussels, but it's Spanish. <laughs> um, so there's just a lot of kind of like contextual research involved to, to make that happen. I really try and like meditate on the play and, um, and I do a lot of research. And so of course with this play not being produced very much, there wasn't like video recordings or anything. I, I came across a couple of like snippets of readings and I did look at a couple, um, well I looked at another translation and then I softly consulted the Spanish because I'm not fluent, but, <clears throat> but that to me is very exciting that there isn't like a lot of um, received tradition on how this play could or should be done and that there's room to really be like inventing that, um, that sort of anything we do with it is a little bit innovative. As somebody who's really interested in the sonic landscape of the play, but knowing like we are not using any recorded sound. We're using all live, all actor-generated sound. That sort of shapes the approach, knowing that there's no um, tech in terms of lighting or motors and lifts, and that sort of informs an approach. Um, you know, knowing that we can't just like iris in or iris out or just, you know, light this while that is in the dark. Um, that all informs the approach. And if I did this exact same play under a different set of circumstances, I might make some different choices. What was really important for this particular production um, is, uh, is illuminating the text and getting at the heart of that. Um, that women's empowerment that I'm really interested in. And in the Black Friars, um, you have this magnificent space. I mean, it's so magnificent and, um, and just gorgeous and stunning that you don't want to negate that anyway with like junk. Um, but you really have to just focus on like, what is the human story? I would love to add that, it, that in addition to working in the Black Friars, you know, and doing it with the lights on and sort of embracing some early modern techniques. Also, the Shakespeare Performance Program um, has this really sort of unique thing where you all as um, MFA students form your own Shakespeare company and really work in a collaborative way to produce these shows. Um, and that's really exciting uh, so that you all <laughs> handle so many additional things, the music, the dance, the fight, so many other aspects of the production are generated from within this collective. And I really love and appreciate that model. Uh, and it's both like daunting to come in as the outsider, but also like super cool to 
be in a position to sort of collaborate with Polaris and watch how Polaris functions as a company. And I know from the past that some of these companies have, have tried to live a little bit longer than the MFA year. Um, I don't know how many of them are still in existence, but I, I do know a couple have, have hung on a little bit longer than that. And 